What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Quartet Sunoff Podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shimanoff. As always, welcome by the one and only Angel Ortega. A lot to talk, to, to talk about this week, to put it lightly. UFC 273, Bellator 277. UFC Vegas is 51. Some boxing recaps as well. Uh, real quick, before we get started, the show is brought to you by Rogue Energy. If you want 10% off your order at RogueEnergy.com, use the code SOUNDOFF at checkout. That's code SOUNDOFF at checkout for 10% off of all your energy needs. Last Saturday night from the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida, UC 273. Man, what a, what a card, what an event. Uh, you, know, you and I enjoyed this the other we were watching it with the boys. Uh, we enjoyed it a lot more than the crowd in Jacksonville. They fucking hated this thing. Uh, they booed every single fight and they booed every single winner. Um, but at the end of the night, as far as the headliner goes, Alexander Volkanovsky and still. Not even close. One of the most flawless victories on paper in, honestly, UFC title fight history. Uh, obviously taking on the Korean Zombie in the main event. From the word go, he was on fire. You know, sometimes, like, you know, sometimes a lot of it depends on, like, who you're fighting and who your opponent was. I don't think, unless you're Max Holloway in there, that anybody could have sustained what Alexander Volkanovsky is putting up there, dude. He was landing at will. He was landing power shots. He was fast as fuck. Like, he was darting in and out there. He was landing some takedowns. He was on fire in round four after a hard-to-watch three previous rounds. He gets the standing finish, Herb Dean thankfully stepping in. Uh, look, man, Volkanovski and still, we kind of knew going in that, like, as far as underdogs go, there's a reason why Korean Zombie was as big of an underdog, but even then, really did surprise a lot of people with how flawless it looked. Give me your thoughts on Volkanovski's performance last Saturday. I mean, you you said it, Josh. It, it was flawless. Unless you're Max Holloway, and it's a uh, the proper opponent. I mean, it really doesn't get any better than that, right? Um, I mean, that's the best. Uh, I think that's the cleanest Volkanovski uh, performance we've had, right? Uh, it's, you know, I saw someone compared to Izzy after he fought uh, Kelvin. You know, like after the Kelvin fight, and then leading into his fights after that, there was a significant growth in his ability and he just continued to win i don't know if that's necessarily the case but i i do like the parallel that person made and it, and it resonated with me for some reason i'm like i i kind of fuck with that but at the same time the zombie's one of those guys that you know i was like maybe he could do it maybe he can upset but we've seen it josh he's fallen short when it comes to these kind of level of opponent josh mm-hmm. and it's very sad and look i i try to help my i try to really hype myself up up for this specific fight but i'm like brian will take a beat Korean zombie and the way he did and Brian lost in the way he did. How do I expect the zombie to do it? Right. And you know, there's some MMA math there, but you know, it doesn't work like that. Right. So I try to give myself some hope. Well, you know, I should have gone with my gut there, Josh, I think a bit. I mean, it's not like I, it's, it's, I didn't pick the zombie to win, but I gave him, I have a fair chance, man. I, I gave him a 25% chance, you know, which is one in four. You know, I think that's a, you know, you, you always got to favor the champ, right. You know, uh, but, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, like I said, it, it was, it was flawless. It was perfect. And, uh, the standing finish, like you said, very, you know, at one point it was almost a little hard to watch. And I really don't say that when it comes to fighting a lot, Josh. I, I have a, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be like, uh, hard about that. You know, I'm not fucking, I'm hard, dude. You know, nothing like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> don't take that Jesus, in context, dude. please. But you know what I'm getting at, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not like this fucking, you know, heartless individual, you know, but, I was like, damn, you know, I'm not, you know, and I, and I told you there that specific night too. I was like, you know, I'm not one of those guys who ever like would think of throwing in the towel, right? That was the mm-hmm. one time I think I would have thrown in the towel. And I never am a proponent for throwing in the towel, Josh. Mm-hmm. No, I know. And, and I can understand why people want to throw in the towel. And, uh, after the third round, I, I really think they should have, dude. It was the first two rounds were like, Zombie getting out class, but he wasn't getting battered, if that makes any sense. Like, he was losing, he was getting taken down, but, like, there were a couple of flurries in there, like, where, like, oh, shit, you know, Zombie's landing a couple of shots here. Round three was just a beat down, man. Like, round three was a straight-up beat down. He dropped him near the finish, and he got saved by the bell. And you could tell going out for, going out for that fourth round, Volkanovski literally asked him, he's like, are, are you good, dude? Like, are you okay? Like, his green zombie's face was like a mess. And, you know, in true zombie fashion, he, he literally just laughed and smiled, because, you know... He's, he's a zombie, you know, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's never going to go up, but yeah, man, it was tough to watch. Like after such a, after such a fun event, like that's on paper. Like, like I can't think of a sadder main event that I saw like in a long time. 
Like, we've seen some legends lose, and, but, like, not like that, man. Like, there was just something so sad about the whole thing. Because Volkanovski even felt bad. Like, he talked about, like, in the post-fight interview, he's like, they're not post-fight interview, post-fight presser. He's like, after the third round, I started to feel bad. Like, you know, this guy's got a family. He's got stuff that, like, they, this fight's not even competitive. Like, why am I here? Like, and, uh, you know, but he had a job to do. This is not like the, this is not like Hanato Moicano, Rafael Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos was beating the shit out of him. And then in the last round, he decided to coast a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, but Moicano doesn't have that one hitter quitter power. Korean Zombie does. So Volkanovsky couldn't even take a foot off the gas, you know, for the risk of him getting clipped, you know? Um, and he went out there and he landed a couple of big shots and he, and he put an end to the whole thing. Um, as far as this goes, um, as far as uh, the Korean Zombie's career goes, I, I gotta, we gotta say one thing, I guess, because we're gonna ask him from here. It's essentially, we know the blueprint, you know what I mean? He's gonna fight Holloway and if he wins, he's gonna go up. That's essentially what he's been saying. I don't think he wants to really do that. I think that he knows he'd be really, really small at 155, but at the same time, there's no real contenders left for him to face. He's already beat Ortega, he's beat Zombie. Uh, if he beat Holloway, he would have beat him three times. He's already beaten a lot of guys in that division. Um, and a lot of other contenders aren't very active. Yari Rodriguez hasn't fought in a while. Zabit's out, you know, Cater, I understand he did get a good win, but he still got mauled by Max not too long ago. Giga just lost. There's not a whole lot left for Volkanovski there. So we, his blueprint is laid out. He's already said that. For Korean Zombie, he talked about, um, you know, and this is actually apparently, Angel, I saw something about this. Apparently the translation, the the, the Korean kid they had in, Gar- in there did a terrible job. That's what I've heard uh, um, on the Internet. Apparently Zombie said, like, you know, I know now – that I'm not going to be USC champion. Like, I've worked so hard for this. This is what I've always been fighting yeah. for. If I continue, I'm going to have to find something else to fight for, and I'm not sure if I will. If that was the Korean Zombies' last fight on Saturday, would it, would it an ama- amazing career? Give me your thoughts on the Korean Zombies' potential just career. And I saw people talking about this. Do you think he makes the Hall of Fame one day? I mean, he has fights that will. I mean, we saw it, right? He, he did have one, didn't he? Hmm? Or he will have a fight that will make the Hall of Fame. I mean, I the fucking... So. Yeah, he will have one. Shit, uh, shit, one he might even have lost too, Josh. I mean, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I mean, Hall of Fame. I mean, that's that's tough, man. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think if you didn't have that uh, that military time off, man, I think we we could be looking at a very different career. Yeah, I think so. I said I said it to you like as we were like leaving. I was like during that period of time whenever Max just became champion and Aldo. Not even before Max became champion, whenever all was kind of in that weird spot where he'd already lost McGregor, but he was kind of the champion because Connor left the division. I think Korean Zombie might have been able to become champion at that time. Um, after he came back, like, he really changed up his style a lot, which I think kind of, like, goes under the radar. It doesn't get talked about uh, at least enough, in my opinion. Um, because he was so wild. He was, he had great grappling, you know, and he was just, he was, a, he was a brawler, dude. But whenever he came back, he's more of, like, a technical brawler. And, Ever since he also, also, when he went to fight ready, dude, I'm not sure what their game plan was for Zombie on Saturday. Like, I, I really don't want to bash that camp because they've proven by this point that they are a good camp. But, dude, what what, what was their game plan? Like, he's, he wasn't going right. to out-technical. Yeah, he wasn't going to out-technical him. There was no game plan to get it to the ground. Um, the only time that Korean Zombie actually had success was whenever he started brawling. I mean, there was a couple of exchanges where he was just, like, started said, fuck it, and threw some hooks, and he had some success. Um... But those were very, very small, very in between, and you know, nothing really happened. So, Cejudo wasn't there, dude, and Cejudo's re-entering the testing pool. That's true. That's true. Apparently, he said before that he's going to. So I'm not. I'm not really sure how much. Today, I... Josh, he's coming back today. No, no, I know he said it, but he's also said before that he's going to. So I'm just saying, you know. Um, yeah, but those those times there was like no official reporting. It didn't come from Ali. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, man, if that is it for the Korean Zombie, I think he's going to make the Hall of Fame. I think uh, what a tremendous career. Um, if he does decide to come back, awesome. I think he's still a very good guy. I think we saw we saw him dominate Dan Ige, like, you know, less than a year ago, and Dan Ige's a top-ten guy. So there is that a place a for him. That was a really clean performance. Yeah, there's a place for him in this division if he wants to continue fighting. If he doesn't, though, I completely understand it. So, um, yeah, man, it is what it is. Uh, co-main event, man. This fight, goddamn. So essentially, um, obviously, we know the story. Piotr Jan loses the title to Aljamain Sterling via DQ. You know, I remember telling people going in, I'm like, hey, that fight was a lot more competitive than you remember. Like, you know, one judge had Aljo winning, going into the fourth round, greater the tide had turned, but, you know, he had some success. 
Well, dude, I don't think anybody foresaw the success that uh, he actually did have. So Aljo comes out round one. This round is actually very contentious, but, you know, Pierion's coming forward, but he gets outstruck on the on the numbers, at least. Um, I also thought he lost the round in, in real time. And now, Angel, I know you said you did as well. I know that you changed your opinion on that a little bit, but I remember in real time you also said that you thought Pierion lost round one. He was coming forward, but he wasn't really throwing anything. Uh, Aljo landed a couple of really, really good kicks to the body. He didn't really try to take the fight down to the ground. And then in round two, you see the game plan. He, he puts round one in the bank. Round two goes to get the takedown immediately, and he dominates it. He nearly some big strikes that had Pyrion turtling up at some points. He nearly gets the choke, but he doesn't get him out of there. Round three, you know, 30 seconds of the round, boom, same thing. This time, no really searching for the finish, but this time it was four and a half minutes of backpacking. You know what I mean? Um, round four, Pyrion's round, uh, he stuffed the takedowns. He, he had some nice moments. It wasn't like dominance, like uh, – you know, Aljo's rounds, but he did win in round four and round five in similar fashion. Go to the scorecards, Aljamain Sterling Angel, and still he goes up 2-0 in the series against Peter Young, which sounds really, really weird. Dude, give me your scorecard. Give me your thoughts. Was it a robbery, Angel Ortega? Uh, this is one I, I like I told you, I, I think I need to invest a lot of time into because I, you know, we, we talked about the, the, the potential 10-8. There was no 10-8 on any card. Uh, which, you know, we argue that there should have been the first round that I, I do think I need to go back and re, uh, rescore. And like I told you, I think if I rescore it in multiple different ways, I have it going the opposite way, if not a draw. Mm. That's interesting. So why, why, why do you come to the conclusion? Cause I know on the night of you were like shocked that it was even a split decision. Uh, yeah, cause I was like, well, I mean, I was like, well, we'll go, you know, I was like, well, I, like I told you, I was like, round one's close. I, I don't know who it was at the time, but I'm like, okay, well, let's just say it's, if it's Aljo, then they give it to Aljo, and then two and three are pretty, pretty clear, and then four and five were, were yawns. Uh, but it, it, you know, something as the day, you know, at the time though, it didn't seem like a very controversial, but as the day, as the following days followed, I, I heard, I started hearing more yawn. You know, like that he won. You know, more robberies. The the fact that no one no one's really arguing a draw is crazy to me, though. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Which I think makes the most sense, even more than a than a yawn win. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I think that makes more sense uh, than a yawn win. I don't see any real capacity in which yawn won. I mean, just you see, honestly, my scorecard. I said it on the night of, and uh, I said forty eight forty six Aljo. I gave him rounds one through three, and I also gave him round two at 10-8. Um, I was shocked there was no 10-8 in there. I understand why round three wasn't because a lot of it was just controlled. Man, he had he had Pierre Dion turtling up. He was doing some big shots in round two. He got the neck crank at one point, but he couldn't finish it. He got damn close to finishing the fight, though. Uh, round three, not really the case. Um, I'm, I know why people are saying this is a robbery. If this is ever a close fight, people are going to say it's a robbery because I hate Aljamain Sterling. That's just that's the truth of the matter. Um, I didn't think it was that close. I thought it was a pretty clear win for Aljo. I thought, like, he, here's the thing, dude. Like, round one, I understand. He's coming forward. But that's supposed to be – and I think I made this argument back whenever TJ fought uh, Corey Sandhagen. and I remember this, I made the same argument. He's everybody talks about, oh, but he's coming forward. He's coming forward. He's the octagon control. Octagon control is the last metric. If striking is even, which Aljamain landed more strikes and more significant strikes, he threw more. And every single, in every single subject, every single metric there is, Aljamain Sterling was better in round one in striking. So he wins that round. But let's say, hypothetically, if everything was even, it goes to octagon, octagon control, in which case Pyrion will win the round. But it wasn't even. So, I don't know. It's, I think you do need, do need to rewatch it. I mean, just to give your, like, full thoughts. But yeah, I rewatched it yesterday and I have the same opinion. I, I did not see anything controversial about the win. I thought it was, if anything, it was kind of over, you know, I thought they were being beneficial to Jan, but they're being over, not, overly nice to him. Uh, I remember, I, in case you guys are curious, look up MMA decisions. The vast majority of the media has it in uh, in Aljamain's side as well, which I kind of take that more stock in that than I do in. Fan what do the opinion. What do the people have uh, when you look at fan opinion on uh, MMA decisions? Fan opinion, forty six percent has Jan defeating Sterling. Oh. Um, 18% Sterling defeating Jan, 48-46. 16% Sterling defeats Jan, 16.1%. Sterling draws with Jan, 12.8%. Interesting. So we got a, you have a fair, we got a fair mix. So essentially 50-50 if you add up, you know, 
everything else. But yeah. most most of the fan opinion, not fan opinion, fan opinion tends to be on Yon's side, which makes sense. He's a fucking hate Alderman Sterling. Is, is, isn't it funny how in MMA you could have stuff like this where it's really hard like this, but in boxing you could, for the most part, in my opinion, kind of find the clear winner? Like there is there is the, the rare boxing match where it's hard to score. Less less rounds, I think. But, but yeah, you're right. But it's but granted though, it is five rounds opposed to the regular three rounds. So you'd think it'd be easier. But at the same time, in MMA, it might be easier to score less rounds than more rounds. I think there's there's can be a case made for both. I think so. Um, I thought that was just an interesting thing to think about right now. That you just uh, but but also though, but also though, boxing on I feel like on average has a tremendous more amount of robberies. Uh yeah, but they they also have terrible fucking judges. Well, yeah, that's why there's bad robberies. But you, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah. like on average. But anyways, um, yeah, man. I but you know what like, I mean as far as yeah. people though. Like, if you if you sit down and watch the twelve rounds and you have some sort of there's an easier way to judge it. Like, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, I thought this was a clear Aljo win. I had no issues with it. Um, but as far as moving forward in the division, Angel, it's not going to be a trilogy. And as somebody who's getting a little bit, a little bit tired of, uh. Soft. Whatever, fuck off. Uh, I'm just, I'm just so tired. I think the, the fact that we need to give everybody an immediate rematch of a fight is close, just, it backlogs divisions, dude. It's just, that's just a. I mean, there's a lot to this, though, because there, there's stuff to it, though. There's the illegal knee, which obviously his fault, right? You know, no, 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 no. I'm not, no, I'm not talking about, no, obviously this, that's why this happened. I'm speaking more and, other fights. Oh yeah, I mean I get that. Regardless though, I mean it's gonna be TJ. And, I mean that's still that's that's a good fight and they can sell that well and I think that's gonna be that's gonna be good. I mean I don't know if that is it gonna be a headliner? Do you think that will headline a pair of you? Do you think? Oh, probably, probably not. Probably not. You know, Cole made that with something. We'll see. That's what I'm assuming. Yeah, but I mean as far as as far as that fight goes, that is gonna be the next TJ Dillashaw most likely. Obviously Dana didn't give like a definitive answer, but TJ was in attendance. Um, and they panned the camera over to him, and, and you know Aljo called him out, and said he was using steroids, and that whole thing. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be a fight next. Uh, the never ending, you know. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a really rough matchup for TJ, dude. Um, if you hate, if you guys hate Aljo and Sterling as champion, you you're, may you're want to hate strap him even in. more. Yeah, you may want to strap in because uh, you know that's a it's a weird matchup. thing because I feel like there's probably like a lot of people who just as equally hate TJ as much as uh, Aljo. I feel like they're probably gonna cheer TJ, in my opinion. For some reason, Aljamain Sterling gets so much hate, dude. No, but I feel like, dude, I feel like they both carry a lot of hate. This is like, this is actually no, no, they go. both, no, they both do. But a lot of times, whenever there's like a fight like this where fans are like forced to pick, they'll typically, you know, they have to pick somebody in terms of cheering. I guess they don't, but like very rarely you, you see. You like, think fans. they'll pick TJ? Probably, yeah. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But yeah, TJ is probably going to be fight next, which I think is a really bad matchup for him, man. I mean, he's he's already 36. He's coming off of a brutal knee injury. Uh, only one fight in three years. A war to a banger. A war. So and I thought he lost that one. So we'll see what happens. I thought uh, that yeah, man. If you guys, if you guys don't like Aljamain Sterling as champion, you may want to strap in because he may be champ for a little bit longer. Um, la- and then as far as like the people's main event, though, you know, <sighs> goddamn angel. We knew going in, man. This fight can go a lot of ways, and yet I don't think anybody expected it to be a fight of the year contender, just a knockout, drag out brawl. But that's exactly what we get. Hamzat Chemaev still undefeated, though. Round one, they go out, they start brawling, it's a back and forth round, and then boom, Hamzat nearly finishes the fight, drops him with a, he switches stances, knocks him down with a jab, and you're thinking, oh shit, this is what we came here to see. That's that man. He's a bad man right there. You know, we're kind of all thinking that. Boom, Gilbert Burns comes out round two. He starts swinging and banging. He hurts Shamayev a couple of times. And then it all comes down to round three, which is a very, very close round. Again, there's another one that I've been told is a complete robbery by many MMA fans. So, yeah, you give I, me- I don't know what fight people were. This one, I, I thought this one was one of the easiest ones. Out of the three fights, this was the easiest one to score. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought, too. I thought this was a very, very easy, easy fight to score. But as far as, like, the final... You know, how how the third round went, I thought it was very, very clearly, you know, Shemaya's oh, yeah. round. I, oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at – actually, I haven't looked at the MMA decisions for this one. Let me let me look at this yeah. one real quick. Have, have, have you talked to anybody in the media that you know who's gone the opposite way? No. There was there was one score for Burns, 29-28 Burns. And how does the uh, fan, uh, fan base have it? Fan base, 57% 
Shamari defeats Burge 29-28. Yeah, so, so it's like a, so it's like 60-40. Yeah, so that makes sense. I thought this was a pretty clear Shamari of win. I thought round one, he knocked it down round two. Uh, it was a close round also, but Burns did land the bigger punches. Round three, like... I mean, Chemayev outlanded him. Outside of, like, a flurry at the end of the round, that was essentially all Chemayev. He had him hurt up against the fence a couple of times. With no um, response. <laughs> no response. I'm very surprised people thought he won round three. I mean, but let me go and ask, ask this as far as, like, you oh, know. Oh, these fuckers are insane, dude. <laughs> Say it. Um, as far as Chemayev moving forward, I've seen a lot of takes come out of this fight. Let me. I know what you're going to say, but I have to ask this question. Concerning, this is a question that I've seen asked by tons of people. Has Hazmat Shemaev been exposed after Saturday night? No. I wouldn't think so. I mean, what what is your thoughts on a potential Colby Covington matchup now that we've seen him go through? Appa- go apparently, through. that's actually very realistic, and you kept shutting it down. What do you mean? Uh, that that actually might happen. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I think now it will. Uh, but I thought if he went in there and wrecked Burns, there's no way you don't give him a title shot. He thought they were gonna milk it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if he went out there and just dominated him, like he needs on. to have a five round. Yeah, he needs to have a five round main event, man. He can't go to a five round main event his first being ever a title shot. You know what I mean? Not fighting mm-hmm. five rounds before that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see, it. especially such a durable guy like Col- uh, Colby. I mean, I think that's a that's a great test, and obviously that puts him right there for the title. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens, though, because Colby wants to fight, you know, I guess lightweights, apparently. Um, but he I mean, fight, they'll, they'll give, Warrior. He they'll, was, give him, they'll give him the bag for that, though. They'll give him the they'll, they'll give him the fight. Maybe. Give him the bag to, maybe he will. can get the bag for the boss at all, and that's a huge fight. Well, he'll get the bag for Chimaev. There's no way he does, and if he does, no. he, he has a terrible agent. Yeah, I, we'll see. Um yeah, man. He but he's called out both Israel Adesanya and Dustin Poirier, so apparently has no interest in fighting one seventy five, one seventy pounders. So, um, I mean, what? look, man, that's an interesting <laughs> fight. I hear the thing. People saying like, "Oh, he got exposed." I'm like, dude, I feel like Angel. You and I are the only people who actually watch fights sometimes. Like, I, you ever get that vibe? Like, dude, no, I get the vibe that sometimes people are fucking stupid. But no, I agree. But like, I'll call him out on it. They don't give a fuck, dude. Like. I've seen people I, like, oh, he got exposed. Like, dude, I need. I wish we had comments that you can read. Like, they were nameless, and I could just shut these people down so quick. We need to do that, dude. Maybe we start. Maybe we start screenshotted. Uh, what is it called? Uh, we need to make like a a little segment where it, we, <laughs> we call out people on Twitter, dude. We don't we, we don't say their Twitter app, but we read the Twitter comment. And we do like some factor cap type shit. That would be funny. I like that. Um. Yeah, man. But as far as if, dude, if you think he got exposed because he went toe to toe with the, he beat the second best guy in the division. He who the guy who took Kamaru Usman to the limit. Like I see people saying, oh well, there's no way that Chmai beats Karma Usman now. I'm like, dude, you know who also had a super close fight with Gilbert Burns? Like it's just Kamaru Usman. Like he's like, what the fuck are you guys talking about, dude? Like still the only person to ever drop Kamaru Usman. He hurt him bad. Nearly finished the fight. People are fucking crazy. Like, that's all I got to say, dude. Um, if you think that yeah. he went through a war like that and you're, like, coming out of it feeling bad, what were your expectations? I mean, like, like I told you, Josh, uh, the night of, I was like, there, there was some mistakes made. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely, yeah. And, I mean, that happens in a fight, right? I mean, shit, it, the shit's happening. You you react one way and you should be reacting this way and it, and you're not. I mean, it, it's going to happen, right? But, uh, I mean, you know, I, I think there's – I think – uh, next time those those things won't happen, right? He even his coach scolded him. I actually listened to, or actually found a YouTube video of that clip, and I read the comments, and someone uh, they read it. And they're like, "Quit brawling with this guy." Yep. They're like, "You need to start to you need to jab, you need to do this. Quit brawling, quit brawling." It wasn't like a perfect. I'm assuming it wasn't like a perfect translation, but like the, the, the trans the translation was roughly, "Don't brawl with this guy." And he came out with a really round one was pretty was pretty clearly you know Chavez. He came out with a good game plan. He shot a takedown, got the takedown, but he could kind of uh, just tell that was more to just like put him on like on the back foot or whatever, you know. Um, he was using his, he knocked him down with the jab. His striking, despite not doing it very for very long, is pretty clean, you know. And then he went out and started fucking brawling, and, and you know nearly got knocked out. Um, he continued brawling into the third, by the way. Like he, he was he was slightly more technical, but you know he got clipped more than a couple of times. So I think 
this is a fight that he needed. He was like a scary dude. I think he needed this fight. I think he needed this fight for him to calm the fuck down. You know what I mean? And, and remember, oh, yeah, I'm not going to steamroll everybody at the top. I think he needed this fight. And if you're going to get a Tremaya who's more calculated and not super wild, that's going to be a fucking problem for the rest of the division. But, hey, man, he still has a sick highlight reel, even though it's not a finish. Absolutely. Absolutely he does. Um, but, yeah, as, as far as the future goes, man, he might fight Colby next. He may not. Probably I'd be well. cool with him getting a title shot, personally, but that's just because, you know. You're on the hype train. I'm on the hype train, and I think, like, after this fight, it'd be kind of like a weird step. You know what I mean? Like, you have, you're have fast-tracking this kid to the title, and then you'd be like, oh, I know you just beat a title shot, and this would get you – like, dude, we've seen t- guys get title shots for – you know, Leon had, like, an 11-fight win streak. You know how he finally got it? He beat Nate Diaz. Fucking Colby Covington – I had one beaten one. He had he's on a one fight winning streak when he got his title shot. He beat an ancient Tyra Woodley. Like, like I, I, do miles, see, I do. I don't see Tremaya fight another fight though. I do want to see him in a fight round main event. No, 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 I, I, that's, not, line. that's not a requirement though, and we've seen that. I know but, it's not a requirement, but I want to see it. Fair enough, fair enough. I understand that, and I kind of want to require it actually. Fuck that, I'll say it. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, man, I think they should just do it. Like we've seen people get title shots for nothing, and now we're being selective about it. I just, like, I just want to see him five. I want to see him fight or attempt to fight five rounds. No, no, I know, but then, but who's gonna tomorrow? Who's tomorrow gonna fight in the meantime? Uh, he's fighting Leon. No, 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 that happening. That's happening in July. This fight probably won't happen until August. Trying to do a shit ton of damage. Uh, oh, fuck, you're right. Fuck it, we can wait. I mean, it's not like tomorrow's gonna fight twice this year, anyways. Mm. All right, we'll see. Anyways, man, uh, moving one down. Shit, the for all we know, tomorrow might not be champ at the end of the year. It might be. Hey, dude, I'm, don't discount Leon. Leon's very, very good. People got to remember that. That's, um. It's another thing. Anyway, so, anyway, okay. so one down, Mackenzie Dern defeating Tisha George. Another fight that was a robbery. Uh, <laughs> uh, this was – was it? This was a close uh, fight. This is a close fight. Was I'll this the one where I was like – afterwards, I'm like, damn, Tisha won that, didn't she? Is that, wasn't you that my right? You did say that. You did say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought Mackenzie Dern won it, but I don't have a problem with you with it, Tisha Torres. If you look at the media scores, super close. Like, this is yeah, one of those yeah. rare fights. It's like I, – I'm pretty sure I picked Dern, though, like. On our pre-show. You did. You did. You, the only fight that we got wrong was Aljo. Um, Shit, can you yeah. blame us, though? Just, yeah, by the way, the guy who bet 9K on that, shout out. Yo, he, that man, he's Almost sitting pretty right now. Oh, yeah. That was but, like, tripled up. <laughs> anyways, man, so as far as this fight goes, give me your thoughts on it. Um, do you still think that T-shirt won, or do you thought it was the right decision? I'm, I need to rewatch that one. Because at the time, I felt like, I'm like, did Tisha win that? I feel like Tisha won that. It was one of those where I was like, I just had this weird feeling where I was like, I'm not, like, sure. Because most of the time, you know how you watch a fight and you're like, okay, this person won. Or you're like, yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure this person won. it. But then you have the one where you're like, fuck, I don't know, man. You know, that was this. Yeah. That's the feeling I had going into this one. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you mean. I understand. Um, I thought... This is probably when I first rewatched. I thought Mackenzie won, but I didn't have an issue either way. If it would have gone to Tisha, um, regardless, though, I mean, it, it was a good fight. I mean, it was super entertaining. Uh, you know, if fucking if Hamzat and Burns didn't get to kill each other, I thought this was probably gonna be the fight of the night. That was a dope fight, dude. Um, okay. Opening up the main card, this fight, I I'll be honest, dude, I barely remember that it even happened. Right after, like, I forgot this fight in T minus five minutes. Oh, dude, uh, no, but, it wasn't. It, it did not live up to any sort of hype. No, Mark Madsen is still undefeated, though. He defeats Vince Pichel. Undefeated uh, and no no finishes in the UFC. Brutal. brutal. Well, no, he had one. He had one? Yeah, his debut. He knocked out a guy. Holy fuck. That's impressive with the fights I've seen after right? that. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, do you have any thoughts? I don't have any thoughts on this fight. I mean, like I tell you, dude, after, after Marco Madsen's performance against Clay Guida, like, my hype on him really died down. I thought after Clay, like, he was going to come out here and make a big statement against Clay Guida, and then he was going to shoot himself into a big top 15 fight, potentially, and, uh, yeah, no, he's not done that. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. just, he's older, he he has a, a level, and it's, I think he just came into this game a little later than I mean, we should have. I mean, it's nothing against the guy, it's just time was against him, I think. True. And he does still have a solid place here. Like, I mean, he's not too far outside of the Oh, yeah, and he's, and he's undefeated. Know. Like, he could still, like, get some pretty big wins and, and shock us. 
Yeah, for sure. But as far as entertainment goes, like this is not a very entertaining fight. But he did get the win over a very, very tough Vince Michelle. Um, that's Vince Michelle's first loss since 2018. So, and if you look at who he's lost to, he lost to Gary Gillespie and he lost to Hustam Kelubyov, um, who very, very good. But you know, yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen that man in a long time. So, <laughs> anyways, um. Yeah, I man, solid win, but not a whole lot to really talk about there. As far as the rest of the card goes, give me your give me your quick thoughts on other fights down the card. Oh man, where do we start here? I mean, we got to start with. Uh, did we ever find out if it was Mallet or Malot? I'm pretty sure it's Malot. Well, Mr. Mike Malot versus Mickey Gallman, getting the first round submission and putting Mickey down bad. I mean, I showed you the fight. Uh, I showed you the picture afterwards on Twitter. Or Instagram, I can't remember that uh, ESPN MMA had posted. It was uh, it was a rough one, man. Uh, mm-hmm. th- that's probably, uh, I mean, without a doubt, that's the worst loss in Mickey Gall's career right there. Not even close. Yeah, he got flatlined. Mickey Gall's lost fights, man, but I don't think he had ever been finished before this. No. Time. I mean, he got finished by Diego Sanchez, but that was just he was super tired and, you know, Diego gassed him out. It was one and of those. It's, and it's Diego, so. Yeah. At least it's excusable. But, man, not even Alex Morono. Fucking Mike Perry. Like, not even those guys put Mickey out. You know what I mean? Those guys, they have those finishing capabilities. So our boy Mike Malott, he he has to be the real deal. Yeah, he really does. I mean, going in, we thought maybe he's getting set up here. God damn, I don't think we realized how correct we were. You know? Um, He annihilated him. Like, that was a rough, rough knockout to see. And to see a replay, dude, like, he just head bounced off the fucking canvas. Like, Jesus, Mickey. Yeah, man, with all due respect, it was a sick finish. It was a sick finish for sure. That was like, God, dude. Like, he's, he got, it was one of those, man. Like, we just, the shot lands, boom, out cold. Uh, But yeah, man, solid win for him. I'll say that much. Um, As far as some other fights, Raquel Pennington defeated Aspen Ladd. I thought that was a, you know, Thought that was a solid fight, good win for her. Anthony right. Hernandez beating Josh Frem, dude, that was a dope fight, dude. Like that, that kid came fight. on a super short notice. Josh did, and he put up a hell of a fight, man. So, shout out him. You know, um, as far as Ian, Ian Gary got a solid win, but it was one of those ones where it's like we got to remember how young this kid is. Yeah. Uh, he's. It makes sense though. Like it had, it had to happen yeah. eventually. You know what I mean? And second fight and tough dude. Like, hey man, you gotta. You, it's, it's always good to have those fights where you're learning and growing. Shit. Yeah, correct. This is always going to be the result. Like, it was, Darion Lewis is a super, super tough dude. He gave him a close fight. This is the fight that Ian Gary needed, man. I really think he needs these fights to kind of get... Because there is potential there. I think I may have shit on him after his first fight. But you got to remember, there is potential there, but he's Gosh, so Josh, young. You I mean, it, was, it was not a very good fight, you know. But, but Josh, you know, you're being the heel. No, it's okay. I'm being the heel, you know. But he is he's good, but... uh. He is very, very young. He doesn't have a lot of experience. He needs these fights. He really does. Um, anyways, dude, the, the big one that I was super hyped for, and he really, I can't believe he got it done, Alexi Olenek, another comeback victory. He gets his 60th, 45 years old. Do you think that's it for him? I cut out? Am I here? Yeah, I'm you out. cut out. You cut out. Go ahead. I don't know. We're good. We're good. What, what'd you What'd you say? I lost everything there for a second. Oh, I was saying Alexi Olenek goes. He's forty five years old. He gets his sixtieth. Do you think it's a good time to call it quits? Fuck, dude, I would. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I mean that got sketchy. I mean that had. I mean it wasn't like super sketchy, but he, dude, I, I there were some positions where he I was eating shots. And I'm like, man, that's not good for the braid. <laughs> <laughs> that forty five year old braid, you know. Yeah. Well, he said he wants to fight for another five ten years, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, shit. I mean, look, 60 wins, man. Not many people do that. The record looks super nice. Like, I, hey, man, you've done it all. You, you, you're, you're probably not going to get to the title anytime soon. You've lost a lot of top talent. And it's not like you're a bad fighter, but it's just like, I mean, you've aged, you're older, your style is, uh, you know, it's very particular and it's just not going to function at this point this way, you know, and, He's about to turn 45 this year. He's not getting any quicker. He's just slowing down, if anything. And he's been a lot of great guys, man. I mean, he's he's, he's fought a lot in his day and a lot of different promotions. And he he's lived a he's lived a fun career, man. I mean, I think he's gonna look back and be like, damn, 
that's that's pretty fucking awesome. That's the one thing about these guys who fought a lot, dude. You gotta respect is that they've fought all over the world. They've fought all over the in different places, different promotions, and they've gone to experience a lot and win a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And uh, Olenek, I probably should call it here. I, th- I think if we're being honest, it's probably it'd be it'd be a great way to end it out. I mean, for a guy who's been fighting all the way since 1996. Um, he's fought in multiple weight classes. I believe he's fought down as, as little as middleweight, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, and he's had some, I mean, look, his resume has some solid ass wins. He beat Crow Cop, he beat Jeff Monson, uh, Travis Brown, Mark Hunt, Fabrizio Overdoom. He's got a solid resume. I just, as a fan of him, I'd probably like to call him, see him call it quits here, nearly 45 years old, but if he doesn't, there is still competitive fights for him in the UFC. Oh, okay. I you know? found it, Josh. I found the tweet that I was going to bring up. What were you going to say? When Alexi Olenek made his his MMA debut, Bill Clinton was the U.S. president. The UFC was three years old. Michael Jordan was winning NBA championships. Max Holloway was in kindergarten. DVDs were about to replace VHS. People consume music through portable CD players. And I think oh, I saw gosh. another one. I think it was like Kay Hansen and Ian Gary were not born yet. Yeah, that's the one. That's correct. Um, which bringing up Kay Hansen, my girl, she, uh, she did lose. She did lose on Saturday. It's probably going to be it for her UFC career. Um, I still think she has a lot of talent, but I got to remember she's 22 years old. Dude. She's literally like, <laughs> she's incredibly young. I, at the time when she got called to the UFC, I was debating if that was a good move or not. But at the same time, you can't really turn that sort of situation down. So, you know, she's 22. We'll see what happens from here. I mean, she's always been very gracious with her time with me. And so I'm, I'm a big fan of her. I've known her for a couple of years now. I followed essentially her entire career. Um, so she still has a lot of talent, but still very, very young. Like, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, it's probably it for your secret. She did lose to Priya Rodriguez on the prelims. You think yeah, you're going to cut her? Oh, no, but they're not probably not going to cut her. But she, I'm assuming she signed a four-fight deal. I haven't actually asked. Probably should ask that. But, yeah, she's, she, I believe it was a four-fight deal. And she went one and three. I thought she, I thought that Corey McKenna fight was a robbery, but she did lose that one of the cards. But no, uh, no, no, I got you, I got you. Yeah, so you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I think it's funny. This is the first ever card. We didn't talk about this. This is the first ever card. They had the crypto bonuses. You know, they were paying a Bitcoin. We, we we didn't talk about that before, and I wanted to bring it up. I forgot to. Yeah, but you know who? Did you see who won them? I saw that Olenek, or not Olenek, I saw Chemayev won one. I know there was three total, right? There, there's three. For 30,000, 20,000, and 10,000. Chemayev got the first place. Volkanovski got the second place. Gets third place. And it was, it was Piotr, which was interesting. It was Piotr Jan, yeah. But, it, but it's fan voted, so. Yeah, it's really funny. We're going to see some wild ass bonuses, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, I, I hope people hook up, like, fighters on the undercards, dude. Like, I really do. I don't think it's going to happen. No, 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 there, there has to be. There has to be. There will be. There will be. You know, for bangers on main cards, too, like guys who maybe aren't, like, as big, they're going to get. There will be some. Trust. I, I believe in the people. Yeah, I don't. But, yeah. I, how, do you, how do you vote for them, dude? I wanted to vote for me. I wanted to vote for them, and I did not I have do. no idea. Oh, fuck me, Josh. I'm just I'm just saying. Like, I don't, I don't know. Fo- oh. you, why are you this fucking worthless? <laughs> Damn, dude. Um, I don't actually know. You're like, dude, we're on air. <laughs> Dude, you can talk about this way behind the scenes, but damn, dude. Like, they take place at Crypto.com's website. Really? Fans will get three votes per card, and fans can vote on both fighters in about if they wish. It'll start at the start of the pay-per-view, and will end an hour after the card ends. Oh, so it's only for main card? No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, this, the voting starts at the main card. Oh, you can okay. vote for prelims. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So there you go. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to vote on that, apparently it's only for pay-per-views, which kind of sucks, but I get it. Um, it makes sense. If they're going to be handing out money like that, yeah. Yeah, but fair enough. Um, Especially yeah. in Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, something I did mention. Dude, the Jacksonville crowd hated these motherfuckers, bro. Like, they hated I mean, They booed damn near every single fight. I mean, Josh, I mean, I, I can answer that for you. You want me to answer it for you? Go ahead. It's Florida. There you go. Uh, <laughs> that's that. Yeah, dude, it was... um. Fun card. I had fun with it, you know. But if you listen to the crowd, you would have thought this thing was a I mean, it, it, it was. It was a fun card. It's definitely oh, fuck. It's, it's definitely not the best pay per view of the year. No, 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 not even close. I mean, what, what do we? I mean, two seventy one. Yeah, two seventy one was better. I'd say. Yeah. Uh, two seventy one, two seventy have to be a 
pretty close for me. I agree. Uh, as far as uh, pay per views, but granted, though, there's still many more to come, and I mean, the next one, I mean, oof, mm-hmm. oof, man, I, I am. It's a month away, but man, do I want it bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I am very excited for that one. But as far as UCT is going to be, essentially all we got to say on that one. Um, yeah, man. Moving on to not UFC. There's actually Bellator. So we're gonna hit that first. It's going out Friday night. Oh shit, we're doing Bellator first. Yeah, I'm just trying to switch it up. It's because it's happening one day before the UFC, so might as well just hit that one. So just, oh, it's, it's happening on Friday. Order. Yeah, chronological order. Interesting choice. I know. So it's at the SAP Center in San Jose, California. Two title fights. This is a tremendous card. Obviously, um, I can't believe that they're having such a little promotion this one. But I guess you know it's fight week. We'll see it kick off. But dude. This main event, again, they're running it back. A.J. McKee, Patricio Pitbull, for the first time since July 2021, they fought back then. Uh, and it was such a hyped-up matchup. Obviously, uh, the Bellator GOAT, essentially, Patricio taking on the future of Bellator. He's been fighting there since his debut. He was 17-0. and He dominated everybody, and he proceeds to dominate Patricio Pitbull. It hurts him with, I believe, a head kick, and then chokes him out in the first round. AJ McKee and New, they're running it back after such a long title run. It makes sense for Patricio to get the rematch. Do you think anything is going to be different in this rematch? Because I think, obviously, we sh- AJ McKee showed his ability, but I think we got to remember, dude, Patricio Pitbull is still that guy. So that, what do you think about this one? That's, that's the thing, right? He's still that guy, man. That was a very short sample size. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know I've, I don't know how much Pitbull took from that. Uh, but obviously, uh, he, he took a fair bit. I know, because <laughs> he, he got finished. But what I'm getting at is, <laughs> as far as information and what he's going to take back to the lab, that's that's you know that's the thing. Uh, what adjustments will come in? What will he avoid this time? Because he's beat bigger guys, he's beat long guys, you know, he's beat young dudes. I mean, this is not a new thing for him, right? Mm-hmm. He's been a champion for a very long time, uh, and he doesn't have his belt right now, and he wants it back, man. And he's on a mission, and I'm curious to see like. What's going to be different this time? What What's going to happen? How much farther can it go? Does he get to finish this time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think this fight's a lot close. I don't know what the betting odds are, but I feel like, man, this is a very, very close fight. And I kind of feel a similar way going into it um, as I did the first fight. I could see either guy winning. I am going to go ahead and just spoil it real quick. I'm going to go AJ McKee, dude. I still think this kid's the future um, of Bellator. I I would like to see him in the UFC one day, but I, I understand that he's their homegrown guy. I would I expect him to be in there for a while. He's Still getting the only, bag. Yeah, he's getting the bag. He's also only 27 years old, dude. Like, he just turned 27. AJ McKee is still only going to get better, and that's fucking terrifying. Like, God, this kid is legit. I am going to go ahead and pick him. Um, Patricio, he's in a weird place, man. He, he's about to turn 35, which is kind of that point where, like, a lot of – well, a lot of guys at Featherweight and Bantamweight kind of go down by this point anyways. Um, you know, and he's talked about potentially going down to bantamweight, going back up to lightweight. I could see him doing either one. If he loses this one, he'd be down 2-0. Do you think AJ McKee gets it done again on Saturday? I mean, shit, Friday. My bad. Man, Josh, you just had to I know, day it's, I'm not used to this. <laughs> You're not used to this. No, that's okay. I got you. I'll, I'll let it slide this time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, man, I'm on the same page as you. I think AJ's going to get it done again. I think out of the I mentioned this, dude. I think outside of the UFC, he's 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 one of the biggest stars that uh that's in mixed martial arts. You know what I mean? One of the best talents, and uh, um, I mean he's that guy you want to watch. You know, if you want to if you want to follow another promotion, he's that guy to watch. Honestly, he is a uh, he's a fucking stud, man. Uh, I mean he, they they sold me on this talent, man. I mean they they sold me on it now. I've been I've been on the hype train, man, and I uh, I'm a fucking I'm a fan, dude. I'm a fan. I'll say it. I like watching him, you know, I'll put it out there, you know, I'm not afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, and uh, it's, it's honestly going to be a banger of a fight. I'm very, very excited for that one, but I don't know, is it is it just me, or am I, I'm personally way more excited for the co-main event. I should, I, dude, I, I feel, I'm getting a little bit more hyped up as we're talking about it, but I, I don't know why I'm not more hyped up now, dude. I feel like I should be more the hyped main up. Of the lead, just leading into this card, man, you know, oh, sometimes okay. you just get those... So you start talking about it, you get really excited, and we're just a week of you're thinking about it constantly. It's kind of like that girl you're crushing on, you know what I mean? And she's just on your mind all that time. Like that's how I feel. I should feel about this card, and I don't know if you, you know you've had those feelings about cards before. You're like, 
oh fuck dude i'm just excited for that fight man i just you know yeah yeah i completely know what you mean dude and this is um now that we're talking about it more i'm getting more excited this co-main event though i've been hyped up for for a while i mean ever since they announced this tournament i was like you know if they can meet in the finals this one would be pretty good uh vadim nemkov the champion at 205 pounds taking on Corey anderson uh, obviously, he's changed his nickname, but he'll always be Beast in 25-8 to me. Corey Anderson is Beast in 25-8. Um, the most hilarious nickname of all time. But regardless, he has been Beasted. He's been a Beast for a while now. Uh, I believe he's won, like, something, I believe, uh, seven of his last eight fights. And his one loss to Jan Bohovich. During that stretch, he beat Latifi to share a walker. He moved, in Bell to 20, moved over to Bellator excuse me, in 2020. He knocked up Mama Manhoff. He beat Dovasan Yagamashirov, and then he beat Ryan Bader. Uh, but even though obviously is a monster, his last loss was in 2016. Since then, he's beaten some just insane opponents. Liam McGeary, Phil Davis twice, Javier Cavallo, Ryan Bader, and Julius Anglicas. This is the, final, the finals of their light heavyweight Grand Prix, which, you know, it took some hits over time. Um, but still, like, it's, it's honestly, like, we're finally reached the conclusion Give me your thoughts on Vadim Nemkov versus Corey Anderson. Who do you got? Dude, this is probably the best fight you can make in this division right now in Bellator. I mean, can we just say it? Yeah. I mean, it does. I don't even think it gets close right now. If I'm being honest with you, I don't. I don't think. I don't even know what comes close to it right now. I mean, these are the two best guys in this division. Shit, dude, you could throw this card. You could throw this specific fight on a UFC main event, and I could say it's probably. Still one of the best 205 fights in the UFC to make, too. You know oh, what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Both. I mean, Corey Anderson was ranked like number two or three when he left. Something like that. He was up there, man. I mean, he's he's, he's an insanely good talent, and then, and now that I think he's fighting in the way which he wants to fight, he's getting respected and paid in the way he wants. There is a there's a lot more comfort and in, in, in enjoyment, I think, even in himself fighting. So that makes him very dangerous too. And uh. Nemkov, man, I mean, he's he's been he's had to face a lot of adversity in these in these two first fights, man. I mean, he got, I mean, who was it? It was it was uh, our boy, uh, Mister Wonderful, right in the first round. Yeah, Phil Davis. Which he gave him some problems in their first fight, and he's a tough out. And then uh, he had Anglicus coming on short notice, and she, Anglicus gave him some trouble too. But uh, he was able to figure, he was able to download it and figure that one out. For Corey Anderson, I mean, it's not like it's been a easy road i'd say but i feel like he maybe kind of had the slightly easier road to an extent you know <laughs> yeah. so just hey man i mean we were hyping up our boy yags i mean i picked yags for the upset i mean hey man yags did tag him one time in there man he had, you know he had some nice moments yeah, still nice a good moment. guy still a good guy he's on this card too we got we'll shout him out here in a bit again uh but man as far as my pick man I, josh i'm gonna stay with the champ i'm gonna stay with nimkov but look i i am Terrifically afraid of Corey Anderson. I can't deny it. Yeah, and look, dude, Corey Anderson is still that guy. And I remember whenever Corey Anderson left the Bellator, you know, he was still talking like, I'm, I'm kind of doing this just for the money, but at the same time, I know I'm the best light heavyweight on the planet. And people have always been memeing about that, but dude, all I'm saying is, look who's the champ right now. So, <laughs> um, it's a guy that he like 30 26 not too long ago. So, I mean, Corey Anderson does have a claim as the best light heavyweight on the planet right now, but so does Vadim Nemkov. He's a bad man, uh, and honestly, he seems like he's only getting better, in my opinion. He's only he's still 29 years old, and, I mean, you brought the Phil Davis fight. That first Phil Davis fight was super close. In 2018, he, you know, it was a split decision. Phil Davis had success in the grappling. They re-ran that one. Like, at Bell Tour, I think 257 was the card. That fight wasn't even very close, dude. Um, he outpointed him, and it looked like he's gotten better. I think he can continue improving. I'm going to take the champ, but, dude... Like you said, Corey Anderson's got a damn good shot of pulling this off. I would not be surprised if at the end of the night we're hearing, you know, Corey Anderson's the new belt or light heavyweight champion. I'm going to go ahead and take the champ to retain, though. I think I'm going to pick both champs to retain. I could see either fight going the other way, though. As far as the rest of the card goes, what are some other fights you're going to talk about? I mean, Josh, we always got to bring him up. The most hyped up prospect of Devin May ever, Josh. Aaron fucking Pico. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm actually not familiar with his opponent. Adil Edwards. Do you have any info on the guy? Coming actually? in, uh, coming in. This is actually Aaron Pico is supposed to fight. Oh my God, he's like I can't remember his name. Uh, Jeremy Kennedy. 
Oh. And Jeremy Kenny had to come out on, I believe, nine days' notice. So Adi Edwards is coming in on super short notice. I've, I know he fought an ex-MMA, I believe, former CFFC veteran. Solid record, young-ish dude. I mean, he's 32, but this is his first time fighting at the top level. Uh, it's going to be an interesting fight for him. It's going to be a very interesting fight for him. Um, kind of an unknown kid. Aaron Pico, though, he's 25. He's just now entering his prime. If you look at his last two fights, whenever he came up, you know, he really got pushed way too soon. And then, like, I mean, in his fifth fight, he knocked out Leandro Higo. It was like, was he, I believe he's a former, I don't know if he was a champion, but I know he fought for the title. No, he wasn't a champion. He didn't fight for the title, though. And he knocked him the fuck out. And he nearly knocked out Henry Corrales. So, you know, and then he, you know, he got he got finished a couple of times. He took another step back. And he's just been fighting smart. He's gotten some nice finishes. This kid is the future, dude. I'm still super high on him. Like, he's still very, very, very good. And I think he wins this weekend. But, yeah, just a quick shout-out on him, dude. Um, that's going to be a great fight. Tim Johnson back for the first time since he got murked by the GOAT, Fedor Emelianenko. Shout-out. Um, shout-out. Shout-out, the GOAT, Fyodor. Um, and taking on Linton Vassell. Uh, Linton Vassell, like, low-key, making a nice run of this heavyweight thing. I remember whenever he announced he's going up the heavyweight, I was like, Ooh, that's a rough match. That's rough for him. It doesn't seem like he's not like a big guy, like heavyweight. But he's been putting in work, dude. Three wins in a row, and he's like right there for a title shot. All pretty good names for Bellator, too. I, I mean, if he gets this, Josh, he's right there for the title. He is. I don't even think you can, like, you can't give it to anybody. I mean, outside of. The I goat. Guess, I mean, they could give it to Fedor, but they're not going to do that. They, they said they're not going to do that, so. Because Fedor's going to fight Litz of his cell if he beats Tim Johnson. For a title, that actually wouldn't even be eliminated. a bad match. That wouldn't even be bad. Both, they're, they're both old as shit. <laughs> yeah, Lynn Vassell is a, um, like, a, 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 um, you don't think of him being as old as he is, but he's like, what, 38, 39? Dude, he's, dude, he's gonna turn 39 this year. He turns 39 in two months. Jesus. Yeah. Tim Johnson, no spring chicken either. He's, uh, he just turned 37. So. Yup. Yeah, this should be a fun fight, though. That's for sure. No disrespect um, to the boomers. They're going to come out and bang. <laughs> um, on the undercard, you mentioned your boy Yags. He's going to be taking on former Bell Tour uh, middleweight champion, Rafael Cavallo, who's had a rough stretch, dude. Is that is that um, a fact? Because I, I see Tony Johnson on on Tapology. He's replacing he – just, he just got the fight. He's replacing Tony Johnson. He just stepped in okay. three days ago. That's pretty badass. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, he's had a rough track. He just got released from Bellator um, after his fight against, I believe, Alex Pizzoli. Uh, but then they needed somebody on. They needed somebody to fight Lorenz Larkin on, like, a couple of days' notice, and he took that one. Now, stepping in again on a couple of days' notice, he's taking on fucking Yags, a light heavyweight. I mean, look, dude, Rafael Cavallo started off 15-1. He never really got the respect he deserved because he had a couple of close matchups. The Melvin Manhoff fight, the first one, was the, probably the worst robbery I've ever seen in MMA. Um yeah, I feel like absolutely the worst robber I've ever seen in MMA. Uh, and then he had just a couple of rough matchups, and then, you know, lost a couple of them. And he's, had, he's faced tough comp- competition ever since. He's going right back into the fire against Yag. That's going to be a banger of a fight, though. I mean, Rafael Cavallo does get a lot of hate, but, dude, dude comes to bang. I'll say that much. Same thing for Yags. Um, he was coming off a loss to Carl Everson. So, we'll see. That's um, a banger of a fight, too. It was, yeah. Uh, title Fortune, back into Rakeem Cleveland. More of a title fortune, give me fight, more than anything. Uh, Kyle Crutchmer, who I know I've talked about on this show before. Um, eight and one. Amazing wrestler. He's going to be back. Outside of those fights, is there anything else that I'm missing as far as one you're looking to talk about? I think, dude, no joke, Josh. Remember how we talked about Holland Gracie last time? They're giving the guy a chance again. He was 0 2, now he's 0 3. They're giving him another one, Josh. Oh shit! I I'm I'm don't even remember how the I don't know how his last fight went, but if I remember right, I believe it was, it was a UD unanimous decision yeah, loss. So, so who knows how he's going to do against two and zero Tyson Miller out of uh, California? What, what's this guy's relation to the Gracies? Like what what is his? Hey, dude, I have he's no. He's Helson Gracies. We looked this up. Yeah, Gracie. you said this last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. <sighs> I don't know why he's doing MMA, but we'll see what happens. Hey, man, do your thinking. Yeah, go off, dude. Um, anyway, yeah, fun card, fun card. Not the only MMA this weekend, though. There's more, Not, fuckers. There's more, you fuckers. Uh, UFC <laughs> Vegas 
51, I believe. Um, they're back at the Apex this Saturday night. Uh, Vicente Luque and Bilal Muhammad, both two, I like this matchup a lot because they're both dark horses at 170. And hey, furthermore, they actually shit. fought in the past. They fought so long ago. Angel, I know you mentioned how you watched this fight. Um, they fought all the way back east 205. I want to say they were the curtain jerker. I think they might have been the first fight on like the early prelims. <laughs> curtain uh, jerker. <laughs> that's what I call it. Like they're the, like they're the, they're the, they're the opener, you know what I mean? Um, I, I don't think they were the first fight on the card, but they were early on the card. Um, but anyways, dude, yeah. He's got a hell of a fight right here. Both these guys on very, very nice win streaks. I believe Luke has won something of like, something insane, like 11 of his last 12. Muhammad's on, like, a seven-fight unbeaten streak. Uh, huge matchup here. I guess this one going either way. As far as their first fight goes, I forgot to mention, it was a round one KO for Vincent DeLuge. And that was the last time that Bilal Muhammad got finished. Still the only time he's been finished. So, as far as this matchup goes, man, what do you think? I mean, times have changed, right? You, you'd hope so, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's a banger, man. I think Bilal is a extremely technical guy, very, very safe, uh, Lack, I wouldn't say lacks finishing ability, but doesn't, doesn't ever get, like, you, you see it on his record, man. He, he has not many finishes in his streak. I mean, if, I don't think if any just won the rear naked choke over, uh, Takashi Sada. Uh, but even before that, man, not, not really many. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's only another one before that. I mean, I mean, Sensei Luka, man, that guy, it's finished for nothing, man. Uh, let's, he must have a very happy wife. <laughs> God damn. You're going off today, man, huh? I set myself up for it, dude. Come on. I had to do it. Yeah, I, I could, it was coming from a mile away. I oh, know. yeah, dude. Let, let's be honest. But, you know, back, <laughs> back to it. I mean, for real, dude, uh, you know, all jokes aside, he, he really is that guy. Like, it's, it's do or die, man. You know, for him, it, it, it's get the finish, make it exciting, and on to the next. You know, submission, uh, you know, finish, doctor, it doesn't fucking matter. He'll find a way, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Shit, I actually just noticed that his last two wins were both by fucking submission. They were both Darce chokes. The one on Woodley and KSI. Holy fuck. Yep. What right, a fucking... Dude, the dude's, he's got a mean Darce. Dude's got a... He has a good submission game, man, on top of his hands. I mean, that, that I think it's going to be a tough night for Bilal again, Josh. I mean, look, the mental fuck, the mental fuckiness is already there, dude. He's already beat him once. Like, he's already he's already finished mm-hmm. him. And they're fighting again. And the fact, if I'm Luke K, dude, I'm like delusionally confident going into this fight. I'm picking Vincente Luke. Yeah, I can't blame you, dude. Uh, Vincente Luke is on a hell of a stretch. I've, I've said for a long time, I think as far back as like maybe even like the Nico Price fight. Like, yeah, I've been like, I've been talking, I've been singing this dude's praises to the high heavens for a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, and he gets five rounds, Josh. He gets, he five, does get five rounds. He gets five rounds to do it. It's even scarier. It is scary. No disrespect but. to Bilal Muhammad, just just to say. No, absolutely. I mean, and, and here's the thing: is this is a very close matchup because Wall, yes, he did get knocked out back in what twenty? Oh my god, dude, six years ago was the first MSG, MSG card. Holy shit, that makes it feel so old. Anyways, yeah, but like this fight Fucking is still boomer. right. This fight is super super close, dude. These guys. If there's one like way you're probably gonna beat Luke, it's probably by trying to take him to the ground. And just out wrestle him, dude. Like he has a he's got a solid game off his back, but that's probably the safest option. You're not going to be able to strike with him. Um, hey man, I, like like someone said recently. But how many people get how many people get submissions off their back? <laughs> like just, that finally, you know, finally feed into it, dude. I always bring it up, Josh. But man, uh, like what was the last time we saw someone who wasn't Paul Craig get a submission off their back? It's so rare. People talk about like, oh man, he's got a mean guard, and I'm sure they do in like a BJJ competition. But it's so much different whenever you're getting punched in the face, bro. Like yeah, and elbowed and fucking yeah, dude. No, it's that's the one thing. Yeah, so. I mean, you can have an active guard in MMA. I mean, that's no, no, that's, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of guys will throw elbows from the back in. Um, you know, he didn't get a submission off his back, but he did beat Kiesa without grappling him, and he caught him in a scramble. And that's honestly oh. all he needed. And he, yeah, I mean, it was it was sick. Yeah, it was it was sick. So, um, yeah, man, I've been thinking about this one a whole lot. I if this were a three rounder, I'd actually take Bilal Muhammad. I feel pretty comfortable saying that. Um, I, I respect that. Just because I think for three rounds, I think he's a safer pick. I think he's a suffocating wrestler. 
And I think, you know what, he like, he gets a lot of shit for not getting finishes, but he, like, he brutalized Wonder Boy on the map. Like, he couldn't, like, he was landing some huge shots, man. Like, but, yeah, man, I think in a five rounder, I think that Luke has more time to catch him. I'm a big Bilal Muhammad guy, but I think, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of both these guys, to be completely honest. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take Luke here. Uh, I think he gets the win and keeps on moving forward. I think it's gonna be an excellent win for him. And dude, after this, who knows? Sky's the limit. Put it like that. Sky is the limit. I mean, he's um, a fun matchup, dude, in this division. For sure. And, you know, as far, normally we give our co-main event, and we are going to give one, but, like, like, I mean, what do we really, like, <laughs> like we, don't, we don't know what it is. We've looked at three different websites, and it's different on all three or four. Correct. And we're just going to go by the UFC's own website. Because I think, like, that's the most accurate, that's the best way to do this. Um, the UFC's own website has... Myra Bruno Silva taking on Wu Yanan. So, I mean, these are both two flyweights. Um, interest. I mean, they've had some nice wins in the UFC. You know, Myra, Myra Bruno Silva, solid record. She's seven two and one. Her last fight was a loss to my Man in Faroe, but you know, everybody's losing to Man in Faroe these days. You know, I remember because she had a couple of moments in that one. Um, I mean, not. She didn't win around, but like there were some moments like, oh, you know, she she has some spots in there. Um, Wu Yao Nan, she's lost two in a row, but she did submit Lauren Mueller back in 2018. Uh, still 12 and four, still only 25 years old. Strange shot for a co-main, but I guess if you really, I mean, this is just what the UFC's website has. I don't know if this will actually be it, so this could be a pointless pick. But who do you got on this one? Uh, I pick Wendell Silva. Look. Uh... Our girl, uh, what is it, uh, Wu Yanan. I know she's had a lot of struggles recently, especially, I've seen her get battered a lot on the feet, dude. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I swear I see her every time, like, she'll get really lit up. And look, there's just people who, like, look, like, there's some people who get hit and, like, I got person after a fight and he looks like they received no damage. You know what I mean? And, yeah. A la, uh, our boy Benson Henderson. But then there's guys <laughs> who come out of fights and it look like they received all the damage. You know what I mean? They're yeah. Elkins, Nasuke. <laughs> the damage. Uh, look, you know, for what it's worth, though, she didn't have a bad fight, though, against, uh, Faroe. She, she, if you look at the strike differential, she, she put up a good fight, and she comes out of that, well, she's not, it, it's, it, according to this, she's not currently with him, but she came out of that, uh, Shooter Box Diego Lima, uh, team. I don't know if she's still with him, but she had a pretty good stand up. She came off the contender series. She looked like she was gonna be a good prospect. I mean, she's only seven and two. I mean, so it's not like she's doing bad. I think she's probably a super pick. I know she has a submission game too. I'll go with the Brazilian. That's what I'm doing. That's pretty much the same page that I'm on. I think Wu Yanon could one day be a solid fighter in the UFC, but she's also very, very young and it's kind of the it's kind of the danger of being a female MMA fighter. Because essentially you're gonna get rushed to the to the top. Because there's not a whole lot of other fights there. There's not yep. a whole lot of competition. You know what I mean? The jump, especially the jump is really quick. Especially at flyweight, which is a a rough division. Like she's only 25. She's been in the UC since fucking 2017, dude. Like she was a she was a baby when she got into the UC, essentially. Damn. And um, there was like at flyweight. There's no real. There's like nobody left. So, um, and granted, this is a bantamweight fight, but I'm saying she did used to fight a flyweight. So, um. Actually, why is this fight even happening at Bantamweight? But according according to Wiki's camp, happening at Bantamweight. But, like, these are both... Short notice, maybe a last-minute replacement. Uh, I'm looking just to see if we can get that info real quick. Yeah, because, I, I mean, I believe, according to some business, they, 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 they were originally set to fight each other. Like, this has always been the fight. Uh, fuck, I don't know, I guess. They just agreed right. upon this weight. All right, fair enough. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Um, I'm going to take Mara Bruno Silva. I think that we went on, again... I can see the skill there. Like, I There's watched something her fight. There. I, her Lauren Mueller fight was good. She won that one. Gina Mazzani fight was close. Uh, the Mizaki in a way fight back in 2019. I, that was a really close fight as well. Um, she's just young, man. I mean, she, she's young. I think she might be back just because there's not a whole lot of other fights here. But I think if she loses one, she might get cut. I'm going to take Mara Bruno Silva. I have liked what I've seen out of her. She has a couple of nice wins in the UFC. I feel like it's a safer pick. So I'm going to take her. Uh, again, this may be a pointless pick, because who knows if it's even going to be the co-main spot, but yeah, man. So there you go. As far as the fights on the undercard, what are some that you're looking to talk about? Shit, we're not even going to go to the undercard yet, Josh. We're going to stay on the main card, and I'm going to 
Now, highlight Andre Fiala versus Miguel Baez, which arguably could be the co-main too, Josh. I mean, that was, that's a, uh, that's a banger right there. Absolutely. I mean, that's a fucking banger. I mean, shout out to them for giving them, for giving another, uh, another opportunity to Andre Fiala. Cause he's a good fighter, dude. I mean, he is a solid guy. I mean, he came in on short notice to fight, uh, Michelle Pejea. And he gave him a good fight too. And now they're giving Miguel Baez. I mean, they gave him another fucking killer. So, I mean, no easy fights, right? But granted, though, he he's a good guy on his own. So it makes sense, man. You want to fight the best when you are the best. So we'd like to mm-hmm. see that shit. Uh, I mean, I think that's gonna be. I mean, that that has fight of night potential written all over it, right there. Absolutely, absolutely. And do you know what fight just got canceled literally 15 minutes ago, which I'm really sad about. Which one? Uh, this fight got canceled 15 minutes ago. Elizu Celeste Dos Santos Muniel is, is just got taken off the card. That was a banger too. That was gonna be my next highlight. I know it, it sucks. That one's been taken off. So, um, yeah, that sucks. Um, as far as other fights, man, Hafa Garcia, he's back against Jesse Ronson. That should be a, that should be a banger. I'm a big Hafa fan, obviously former Combate Americas lightweight champion. Um, Chris Barnett, the People's Champ, he's coming back. Um, and honestly, it kind of feels like they're setting up a little bit here. Um, I mean, obviously he's coming off of like arguably considering his, his, his weight class, one of the most impressive knockouts ever, like a wheel kick KO, uh, over John Vellante, who John's like older now, but still at one point he was pretty solid. Um, they think on Martin Boudet, who's nine and one, he's a nine and one, um, not Russian, but Slovakian and he's 30 years old. Uh, coming off a nice, I mean, he's the one who knocked out Lorenzo Hood on the Contender Series. Yeah, um, so, yeah, dude. Like, I don't, I don't like this at all. Um, but yeah, man. Um, it is what it is. It's really they're kind of setting him up, but you know, who cares? Um, Did you watch Lorenzo Hood back in the day in the World Series of Fighting? Is that what you brought it up? Correct. Yeah. Because I remember whenever they got they brought him in, I was like, oh shit, Lorenzo Hood. That's an old ass name, man. Like, he's been on like. He's been on the, the um, I'm not sure if you call it regional scene, but, like, he was one of the guys out of the Black Zillions. I remember a long time ago they were talking about, like, oh, yeah, this dude, is, he's heavyweight. He's a fucking monster, you know? And physically, he is a monster. And he had a couple of nights. He he fought uh, Blades on the the, uh, the regional scene. That was his debut. That was Blades' yeah. debut. Yeah, and he had a couple of other nice fights, and I've heard about it for a long time. And, you know, he got the contender series bout, and he got fucked up. And, uh... Yeah, and he's he's just a, he's one of the guys like a physical freak. Like I think he's like an eighty one inch reach, which is like the same as John, I believe. Yeah, he's like a physical freak. Um, and so whenever Martin Boudet just murked him, I'm like, damn, like this kid's a bad man. So yeah, they're kind of setting him up here. Um, but yeah, dude, Jakar Close, just other fights. Jakar Close is gonna be back. He's back for the first time since he got knocked up by ben- Benil Daryush, which is insane. Like think about the it's think about been the, that long. Think about the world that was that we were in. That was the last card with an audience before COVID began. When was that? I could tell you where I was at. Tell me where you were at, Angel. Uh, dude, I dude, when was it? When was it? Do you know what month it was? I could give you a March. Record. It was March 2020. March. 7th. Oh, so we we were about to graduate. It was one of the last months of our senior year of high school. Yep. So, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. There you go. Um. Yeah, man. So there you go. He's back against Brandon Jenkins. Your boy Jordan Levitt is back. So he's going to be taking on... Shout out. Tra- Trey Odin, I believe. Um, or an opponent change. He's supposed, to, he's supposed to fight Victor Martinez, but yeah. Still, you know, Jordan Levitt, interesting guy. He has a lot of hate because people, you know... You know. He's, playing, he's flamboyant. I mean, we, we could say that. That's not a negative thing. No, but he, he does get hate for that. A shit ton of it. Uh, he's only 26, though, man, and he's coming off a nice, nice win, an inverted triangle win for Matt Sales. That shit was dope, dude. So he's going to be an interesting fight. I'm happy to see that he's coming back. Um, There's William, more on this. Interest- yeah. Yeah, go interesting- for it. Here's an interesting one, Angel. William Knight is taking on Devin Clark at heavyweight. This fight got agreed to only, like, like I want to say, like earlier, like, earlier this month. Late last month. Oh, they, they had just to said, scrap it together. It. Yeah. Yeah. They just said, fuck it, and they decided to give it to him. So this is going to be an interesting fight. I like I like both these guys. I remember whenever at one point Devin Clark looked like he was going to go on a run, and then he just had two rough fights, man. Anthony Smith and Ian Kutilaba. Two rough matchups for him. Let's see if he can get back to the win column here. 
Last real fight I want to talk about, Lena Landsberg taking on Pianikin Dad. Um, I don't think neither one of these girls are going to be contenders, but I think they're both generally pretty entertaining. Lena Landsberg is the most deceptively looking 40-year-old of all time. Never would think in a million years since Holy she... Holy shit, I didn't yeah. know that. Right? That's, um, that's, that's dope. I, and she honestly, she's had a solid career, because I remember she was brought in just to be like a sacrificial land of cyborg. Um, and there's actually a rematch. Just Angel, these two fought each other in like 2012. It was Lena Landsberg's first fight. That's so, kind of badass, man. It's the worst Sweden right now. I know, and they're they're fighting all the way now in the UFC. Like that's pretty badass. Ten years later, so it was it was uh, Kinzad's third fight and Landsberg's first. Love to see it. So that's pretty sick. Um, so yeah, man, I'd love to see it. Overall, decent card. It's not going to blow your hair back in terms of names, but in terms of quality fights, I think there's a lot of stuff to like here. <clears throat> but. Angel, there's still more to talk about. We forgot two boxing matches to preview. Granted, we would have picked uh, the people who won anyways. Um, oh, come on, Josh. I mean, I thought <laughs> Murata. <laughs> I thought, you know, Murata was going to be true. No, no, you didn't. Um, <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> I guaranteed. Um, yeah, man. I think we'll just we'll hit these both pretty quickly because there actually is a fight we do have to preview this weekend, which I'm sure it'll be brief, but... Um, there's a big box match in Angel this weekend, which we forgot to put in the rundown. But we'll hit we'll hit this fight first. Triple G versus Ryan Murata. Build this big drama in Japan. Uh, it was a big drama show. Gennady Golovkin faced some early adversity. Once again, though, he comes through. He knocks out Hiroto Murata, Murata in the ninth round. This is a banger of a fight. The last few rounds were just him beating the shit out of him, though. He showed that, obviously, he's a bit older. But, dude, his ability to cut off the ring... And to land some huge power shots, that shit is still there in spades. He knocks him out. Give me your thoughts on performance. Give me your thoughts on the fact that he's probably, obviously, no guarantees, he might be facing Gennady, excuse me, Gennady Golovkin, might be facing Canelo Alvarez in September in a trilogy fight. Like I told you, dude, I have never seen it more clearly. I, I, I saw, like, the age show so much in that fight. And it's not like he looked bad, but I just no. barely see that he's not as quick. He's just not... He's just not as there as he was a few years ago, and it's, it happens. It's not like he's a bad boxer. Like if he was, I mean, if you transferred all of his talent to him at the age of thirty, he's a fucking killer, and he still is a killer. Mm-hmm. But it's not I mean, yeah, the same he's, level. He's the, uh, he's the undisputed middleweight champion. He unified the belts at forty oh, years old. That's insane. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's he's still doing the damn thing. <clears throat> yeah, he is. And honestly, part of me one does wonder, like, if you were facing a young lion in there. I mean, Murata was 36 in his own right, and he hadn't fought in a couple, and he hadn't fought in like in a couple of years, you know. Um, yeah, man. But I, I see your point. I didn't think he looked bad. I thought he looked, but he looked so slow. And it, you know what? He's gonna have to bring out all of the hat tricks in order to I try mean, and beat. I Canelo. mean, Josh, I could see every punch being. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't a Linux, a Linux feed, but you know. no, 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 no. But he was slow. It was slow. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, he's going to have to bring out all the tricks to try and beat Canelo. But then again, it's no guarantee Canelo's even going to get there. Yeah, put it like that. That's the Demetri other thing, B-ball. too. Demetri B-Ball is a bad. Because everybody see, I thought everybody was like, oh, shit. Wow, he's really going to he's gonna fight Canelo in September. I'm like, don't know I mean, about I mean, that. I mean, I feel like people are saying, I don't know if all people know that there's the caveat that, yeah, that Canelo has to win this next fight for that to happen, though. Yeah. That's the one thing, too. Because I don't think anybody thinks he's going to walk over B-Ball. Some people do. I'm sure uh, those people are fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are probably the people. Do, yeah. Those are probably the people that thought Hasbot lost his fight. Dude, go off, get him. <laughs> I mean, that's true. They they have to be that yeah. fucking yeah. They have to be that fucking clinically insane to think that. That's accurate. Yeah, it's it's facts. Um. Yeah, man. I uh. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I do think it's going to be a fun fight if he does actually fight Canelo. But that's going to be. He's going to pull out all the tricks. And, you know, I'm sure he will because he knows how big of a deal it is for him. But, dude, he did look a little bit slower. But still a solid, solid knockout win. I mean, Murata was champ for a reason. So, and he did it in Japan. That's not an easy thing to do, to go into the Lions Den and pull it off. Uh, but as far as, like, the other big fight that happened last weekend, Ryan Garcia, man, I rewatched one yesterday just so we talked about on the show. He defeats Emmanuel to go. He gives him, I believe, the first loss of his – second loss of his career, excuse me um, – Via unanimous decision, dominates him. 
King Rye back in the win column. I mean, what do you really, what do you really have to say about this one? I mean, I saw a lot of people shitting on him because he did not get the finish. I mean, he needed to get back into the mix and just warm up, you know, get himself back under the lights. New coach, you know, the drama, the the mental health stuff. I mean, it was uh, it was the right fight at the time, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think that's really more or less what it is. You know, he couldn't come back. He couldn't come back and fight Tank. I mean, that was just not the move at the time. Do you think he might fight Tank next? Because Tank is obviously going to be a free agent following his next. These fight. Fu- uh, they keep they keep talking shit. Like it's bound to happen. I, it, that's it's going to happen. It's just when it's going to happen. I'm actually believe I I normally don't say this. I think it's going to happen next. I think I, it's all. I I said I think uh, I mean Devin's taking the big jump, which is crazy. I didn't think Devin Haney would be the one to. But Devin's fight a crazy. F- yeah, if I if Hank Kavosis, he's fucking crazy, dude. I didn't think. I thought Devin was going to fight Ryan before he'd fight either Tank or Haney, if I'm being quite honest with you. Mm-hmm. But uh, he just shocked the shit out of me with that one. I mean, he's uh, he's putting himself out there. i got to respect that, though. I mean, one of these young guys has to do it, and, I mean, he's, he's stepping up to the plate to do it. I mean, dude, I saw a thing. It was like the, it showed a division. Dude, all these guys are young shit. Even Cambosis is, what, not yep. even 30 yet? I think he's 29. Yep. Young dude. Like, like, dude, these guys are going to fight each other, like, three times. Like, one of these guys, like, I hope to God – one of the like out of these guys, they were, they either fight each other twice, like a, what, more than one, like one or more of the guys, like in combination, and there's a trilogy amongst one of these guys. Amongst these guys, I would guarantee that what's gonna happen. And I uh, hope there I, is, I, man. I, and, and I hope, in the, and I hope they're bangers, man. Yeah, no, I'm. I got high hopes for him, and uh, I mean, obviously he took not, you know, he only took that fight essentially just because you know Lomachenko couldn't, but. Hey man, but it was on the table, is, you know. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, like I said, I hate predicting this because generally, you know, in, in boxing they have a fight to lead up to the fight to lead up to the fight. I think it's gonna happen, dude. I think the fact that you know Tank's essentially saying like, F- I don't want to be a fool anymore. I want to fight the real dudes. Like I want to get those real big fights. Um, Damn, I like think. Burden. And Oscar said, he's like, you know what? I don't even need a long-term deal with Tank to make that happen. I'll take I'll take a two, three-fight deal. Like, I'll give him a short notice just to make that fight happen, which I respect that. That he's like, you know what? I, I know the fight's going to be a big deal. I'm willing to like, pull essentially what Canelo does because Canelo only fights two, three-fight deals anymore, you know? Um, he's willing to take that leave. He's like, you know, I'll give Tank a short deal, a bunch of money just to make that one happen. So... We'll see. I don't know if it'll be next. I think it'll happen by the end of the year, by the end of this year, probably. So, anyways, that's not the only, you know, we, that's just a couple of boxing recaps, obviously. I mean, we didn't really have to preview them because, like I said, we would have picked those guys regardless. But, dude, Angel, we kind of forgot about this one. Errol Spence Jr. is going to be taking on Jordinus Ugas, AT&T Stadium, Jerry World, um, a welterweight unification bout. Give me your thoughts on this one. Dude, Earl Spence is a real fucking deal, dude. I only want to see him fight Bud Crawford. Like, no disrespect to Ugas. Like, I think Ugas is going to make this a bigger of fight because of the talent and where he comes from and just the kind of guy he is, dude. But there's no fight in this division that interests me more than fucking Bud Crawford versus Earl Spence, if I'm being quite honest, dude. After the Sean Porter win and a Darny, Danny Garcia back-to-back win, and this this will just prove to me that Errol Spence is the best fighter in this division and the only fight that I want to see is for his Bud Crawford. I call it out every time we talk about Earl. I call it out every time we talk about Bud. I'm not going to stop talking about it until it happens. Well, there is a good shot that it can happen at this point because now Bud is leaving top rank. Well, there you go. So if he wins this one, I think there's a good chance for it to happen. Jordinus Ugas, though, I gotta, I gotta say, it, dude, stands a damn good chance to pull off the upset, pull off two straight upsets. Also, um, Bud is 34. Like, I need to see it before Bud turns 35 and 36. And and yo, Spence isn't young anymore either. He's 32. Yeah, so, like, I, I need to see it before they start saying, well, he caught him while he was old. You know, I don't want that bullshit. Yeah, I don't want that bullshit either. But, yeah, man, uh, you guys has a damn good chance to pull off the upset, man. I got to say it. I'm, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Errol Spence. I'm, sh- I'm assuming you will as well. Oh, dude, I'm picking fucking Ugas. <laughs> Get cocked. No, I was kidding. No. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, God damn, dude. <laughs> they were like, Holy Why are you so mean you about it? Fuck. <laughs> you back um, in my cut card. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is going to be a good fight, though, for sure. I'm really excited for this one, but... Dude, he's coming off. He's only fought once in the last three years, I believe. Um, obviously, he beat Danny Garcia. Pretty flawless win for him. But then he was supposed to fight Manny, and he had a really bad eye injury. You know, he had the car crash not too long ago. Um, 
you got has a good chance of pulling off the upset here, especially considering like he beat Manny with one arm. Like that is so I understand Manny was an old dude, but like to beat Manny Pacquiao with one arm, like I remember even like in the way and people were like, damn dude, like his uh you guys' arm was pretty fucked up, and I don't remember what it came out, uh, what the injury was, but, like, essentially he, like, I don't know if it was a torn bicep or something, but it was a really, really bad injury. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, Errol Spence here, but, you know what, it's going to be a good fight regardless. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about on this fight or in general before you close out? No, man, I mean, we, we covered everything pretty well. I mean, this was a deep episode for us, uh, especially after having a, a short one, yeah. Uh, a short one last week, right? Yeah, I was. I thought. I, didn't have, I thought it was the week before, but yeah, it was last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think we did about as well as we could last week, and I thought this one was pretty good. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, obviously, we hit a whole lot. So, yeah, this is an hour and twenty minutes, unless my recording's a bit off. So, yeah. Ooh, that's that's one of the longest ones we've had in recent time. I know. So, um, as far as the episode goes, hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, I'm at Josh Seven off on Twitter. He's at Angel Ortega underscore up one at Courtside Sound for all things related to the show. Give us a rate on Apple. Give us a rate on Spotify. Subscribe on YouTube. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace and butt grease. Mouse click.